Now in this video we are going to talk about the non-invasive prenatal testing and in this counseling case they will ask us to talk about non-invasive prenatal testing to a mother who is interested in learning about this. The trap in this case is if you only talk about NIPT you'll miss the case, you'll fail the case because in this one it is implied that when you are discussing NIPT you also talk about the first trimester screening that means you also need to talk talk about the ultrasound and the beta SCG and PAPA that we do in the first trimester screening which is covered by the Medicare and most often because we only look at the task in the question we may forget that part and because of that we might lose the case so let's first look into NIPT as well as first trimester screening and then after that we'll talk about the case itself so the difference between first trimester screening and NIPT is first trimester screening is done for uh, assessing the risk of trisomies like 21, 18 and 13. NIPT can do the same thing but it can also check for sex chromosomes so that means it can also reveal the gender of the baby. That is one basic difference. There are other differences as well. We do not need to go into the details of that. The test that we need to do in first trimester screening is we'll have to do the ultrasound and that tells us about the fetal nuchal translucency. There is also the lab test for PAPA and beta SCG. And in some centers, they may do the nasal bonus screening as well. It is not available in all the imaging centers, but some centers do this as well. It improves the sensitivity of the test. Now, one thing you have to be careful about while doing this combined first trimester screening is the lab test needs to be done earlier than the ultrasound so that when the ultrasound is done and they have the results of the ultrasound, they can combine the results from the lab test and get the overall risk. So... You need to remember that the lab test can be done from 9 to 13 weeks whereas the ultrasound can be done from 11 to 14 weeks start of the 14 weeks you can say 13 plus 6 weeks so generally what we do is we send the patient for the lab test at around 10 weeks and then they do the ultrasound at around 11 weeks so by the time the ultrasound results are available the lab test results are also available then they use both of them the results from both of these tests to calculate the combined risk so this is what we need to remember for first trimester screening if anything is positive here it needs to be followed up by a more definitive test which means either we are going to do the cvs or we are going to do the amniocentesis in case of non-invasive prenatal testing what we do is we take the maternal blood and then we check the presence of cell-free fetal dna fragments which are released from the placenta and by using that sample or by using the analysis of the DNA in that sample, we find out the risk of different trisomies, monosomies and the sex of the child as well. What we need to remember here is it can be done after 10 weeks and the sample is usually sent to either China or the US. That's why it takes a bit longer for the results to come back, usually around two weeks. The other thing is it is not covered by the Medicare. And then in case of the first trimester screening, there is partial Medicare rebate available. So that is something for us to remember. Generally, the reliability of this test is low for someone with high BMI. And these are some of the things to consider. What we also need to remember is none of these tests are mandatory for the human. They can decide whether they want to do the test or they don't want to do the test. So what are the key points to include in the counseling? Let's look into that. I will be showing you the exact sentences, exact conversation that you can have with the patient. Feel free to modify it according to your need or if you feel like you have communication challenges, you can even memorize these lines and use them as it is in the exam. Now, moving to the next part, the key points that you need to include is the purpose of the NIPT is to check for different chromosomal conditions. The most popular one, the one that many parents know about is the Down syndrome. So you can tell the mother about the Down syndrome screening that can be done with this and other similar conditions such as Edward and Patau syndrome that can also be screened with the help of this test. They can do this test from 10 weeks onwards. And what we do is we take the sample from the mother and then in that sample, we find the fetal DNA and then we check the chromosomal abnormalities in that DNA. Accuracy is quite high, but it's still not a diagnostic test. And you can combine this test with the first trimester screening. That means the mother can do both the first trimester screening and this test. And if it is positive, we need to go for the CVS or amniocentesis. So how do we start the case? We can start by first, you know, acknowledging the fact that the mother is interested in learning about NIPT. So we can say something like, it's great to hear that your pregnancy is going well. Today, you have mentioned interest in a blood test for early pregnancy screening, particularly for Down syndrome. 
this test is known as and then you first tell the mother about the full form of the test with the alternative NIPT this way you can just say NIPT after this and that will save you some time as well this test is known as non-invasive prenatal testing or NIPT are you familiar with the Down syndrome first we can ask about the Down syndrome and then after that we can talk about the rest of the procedure for a screening for Down, Down syndrome so what is prenatal screening prenatal screening helps evaluate the likelihood of your baby having certain chromosomal conditions these tests are not compulsory first key point and are offered to all pregnant women to provide information and reassurance so the first important point is it is not compulsory then after this that the second thing is telling the mother about the risk of down syndrome that increases with age generally we can use a graph to check the likelihood of down syndrome based on maternal age so there is a graph where you can check what is the population risk of having down baby with down syndrome according to the age the only problem with that is the graph only shows the population risk but not the individual risk of the mother according to her background so we do this test however this screening test will give us a more specific indication for you and this baby so that is what we are trying to tell the mother that we know that the risk increases with the age and for you for your age this is a particular population risk but to find out what exactly is your risk we have to do a screening test so what screening tests are available the first one is the first trimester screening and in this one we do a blood test and we also do the ultrasound to check the back of the baby's neck or nuchal translucency this is generally done at around 12 weeks the blood test is generally done at around 10 weeks so we measure the thickness at the back of the baby's neck a greater thickness indicate a higher chance of chromosomal conditions like down syndrome trisomy 13 on trisomy 18. Accuracy, it picks up approximately 85 to 90 percent of the babies with Down syndrome. But you need to emphasize that this is a screening test, which means it may rarely indicate conditions that are not present. This is another key point that it's just a screening test. So the key components here is you are telling the mother what we are going to do. We are going to do the ultrasound to measure the thickness of the back of the baby's neck. We are going to do the blood test to measure the level of some chemicals. And then based on the results we get, we can find out what is the individual risk of the mother of having a baby with Down syndrome as compared to the population risk. And we need to explain it clearly that it's just a screening test. The second part is the non-invasive prenatal testing. So it can be performed from 10 weeks of pregnancy and what we do is we take a small sample of blood from you. This blood sample contains DNA of the baby that comes from the placenta and by analyzing that DNA we can find out if the baby has risk of Down syndrome, trisomy 13 or trisomy 18. We can also tell you about the gender of the baby although it will be your choice. It is about 99% accurate but less so for trisomy 13 and 18. So for Down syndrome, you can see the accuracy is quite high, but for others, it's not that high. And for sex chromosome also, there can be mistakes sometimes. So this is the basic understanding or basic information about both the tests. Then what you need to emphasize one more time is both first trimester screening test and NIPT are screening test only, which means they may rarely indicate conditions that are not present or may miss the conditions which are present. And this has a very important medical legal implication not telling this to the mother can have medical legal problems later so you need to clearly explain this to the mother and then after that you need to tell what happens if the test comes out positive or how the results are interpreted so you have to tell them that high results in screening tests do not conform a condition it simply means that there is a higher chance further testing is needed for confirmation some parents may decide not to do any confirmatory testing even after knowing that the risk is high in the screening test so that is also the option it is up to them whether they want to do it or not and sometimes even if the screening test shows that the risk is high the actual baby may not have any such conditions so they need to understand this as well diagnostic test for a definitive answer we have to do the invasive test like chorionic villus sampling which takes a small tissue from your placenta or amniocentesis in which we take a small sample of fluid from around the baby. These carry a small risk of miscarriage. The choice of undergoing any screening or diagnostic test is yours.
this is a very important point the screening test also they decide whether or not they want to do and then after the screening test if it is positive they can decide whether or not they want to follow that up with the diagnostic test so if we tell them that it is important to discuss this with your partner and consider what you have pre prepared for in terms of results and subsequent decisions so they need to know that if they do the screening test sometimes it may come out as positive and if that happens they may need to make the decision of doing or not doing the diagnostic test and that diagnostic test has the risk of miscarriage so these are some key points for you to remember to include in your conversation then you offer mother a detailed booklet explaining this test they can read it and please feel free to bring any question to your next appointment and then you can say that your understanding and comfort with the prenatal screening process is our priority we are here to support and guide you through this important phase of your pregnancy which is like wrapping up the conversation so if you think about what we need to do in this test, there are only a few key points. We don't need to say a lot of things and complicate the conversation. We just need to tell them that there are options for mothers to decide whether or not to do the screening test. Both are the screening test. One is covered by the Medicare, one is not covered by the Medicare. And then after that, sometimes the test comes out positive, even if the baby is fine. Sometimes the test is negative, even if the baby has the condition. And then after that, they will have to make a decision about what to do if the test comes out positive, a screening test comes out positive, And that procedure that they need to do carries a risk of miscarriage. Some couples may not want to take this burden and they may just say that we don't want to do a screening test. We'll just directly go for the delivery of the baby. Some may decide to undergo the screening test, but they may not want to follow that up with the confirmatory testing. So you need to clearly explain all these things. You need to explain the risks involved. You need to explain about the cost involved. You need to explain about what decisions they may need to make in the future and offer them reading materials, give them enough time to think about it and then answer their questions. This is the main agenda in this case and you should be able to do this without any problem. So this is what you can do in the NIPT case. Lastly, I want to emphasize one more time, NIPT test, you still have to talk about the first trimester screening as well because that is the alternative option the parents have. And you also need to make sure that they know that they can do both the test if they want or they can decide not to do any of the test. So if you have any questions or feedback for this case, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.